Alright everyone, welcome back to another Steam free-to-play review. Today we are looking at By Moonlight, which is a visual novel. And I will also, like, I'm going to start uploading all the walkthroughs to the games that I beat. And I'll leave the link to the first video in the description. But My Moonlight is a pretty, it's a new f visual novel type game. And it's not too bad, like, it's pretty neat. It, the story is a little bit generic, but they actually add in a lot of things from, like, popular media, media that keep it interesting. And all the characters are pretty diver diverse, like, they're not all the same kind of archetype hero kind of thing. Also, if you want to change the volume on this game, you have to look into the config when... I don't know if you can see where you have your save load, quick save, quick load. If there's config, that's where you change your sound because I struggled for a hot minute trying to find that. Because the game volume is pretty loud. Also, remember to save your game. So I didn't forget this time, thank... Oh, praise the lord. Because <laughs> I was going to be so salty. Because this game, you actually can get a lot of bad end decisions, so that's something you have to watch out for while you're playing this. So basically, you ride in this taxi cab with your hero, which is a paranormal investigator fraud kind of person. And this creepy Uber driver that has like a pale punk sign drops you off at a haunted building that's like super nice. They use some pretty good pictures in this game, like the drawings aren't bad. Like, they're pretty decent, and the, um, like, actual images that they use for, like, setting are pretty well done. You'll see the haunted house that you're checking. The decision in this game kind of matter. I think the main one that matters, though, is who you pick as your companion as you're exploring the house. Although, at the beginning of the game, there are decisions that can kill you, so you might want to think about it before you do something. Always quick save if you can, or do some kind of save. I'd also recommend I'd also recommend saving whenever you like right before you pick your companion if you decide that you want to do the multiple endings. Because my walkthrough is basically going to be the one ending that I cho chose, which was Buddy, because I was interested in seeing how that was going to go. Because he's like one part of the two-part Chunibyo combo. And that was another thing. There's a bunch of anime references in this, which I can definitely get behind because that's my kind of stuff. Nothing too deep, but they have some they have some blatant references and some popular media, like they reference Harry Potter and a lot of things. It keeps it entertaining and kind of humorous throughout. Main character doesn't... The plot proceeds in a strange way, I feel. Because at one point, it seems like they're holding you hostage and then another point you're like friends with them <laughs> it just kind of escalates quickly it's kind of a short story so maybe they were just trying to figure out how to proceed with the plot but it, it's pretty choppy on how like they try to extend the story and whatnot and try to get other characters involved in it but your main character that you're going bond with throughout the game is the companion you pick to search the house and for the life of me, I didn't. I still don't know what's underneath his eyeballs. <laughs> some of the things, some of the actual drawing parts, visuals didn't seem to translate too well, like the smoke and whatnot. I mean, it's way better than anything I could do, but it just kind of looks weird. There wasn't any characters that I got like super deeply attached to. Which I think is kind of like, it's a maybe a personal preference kind of thing, but there was anything that happened too deep or climatic throughout the thing to give you like much attachment to any of the characters, which I think is kind of important to a visual novel. Like, there should be something that makes you feel like some kind of emotional attachment to the characters. Granted, all the characters are pretty, are interesting at least, and some of them are funny. Like, there was one scene that actually had me dying during the walkthrough, I was <laughs> like, god dang. <laughs> but uh, it just kind of drags. There's not too much high impact things that happen in the story. Even when you get to the actual climax of the story, there's not anything that's too shocking or deep or anything that's going to make you think like, oh man, this is so intense. They try a little bit, but it. I feel like it could use a little bit of work in the storytelling aspect. But the visuals and the like 
they do pretty good. It's kind of like a kid's game kind of thing, it feels like, with the story. It's very kid-appropriate, at least. I don't think they cuss or anything. And you get to pick your name, which is cool, and they will address you by your name. That's pretty neat. Most visual novels don't give you that kind of option. And it fits my actual fluffy panda, so that's really good. Usually I have to swap it to Sir Fluffs. So this is the first part I died in the game, and I didn't see it coming because I was like, Oh, well, this skeleton seems so friendly. There's no way he's going to murder me. And then, by making a wrong decision, lending my hand, he actually takes my hand. Also, there's an Undertale reference. So when the characters are like kind of identified by the game, there's a little cutscene thing. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the game, to be honest, because it looks pretty cool. And it has like a different drawing style to it. Um, and his like cutscene title was like, not Sans, so there's your Undertale reference for the game. Even though he reminds me more of Papyrus than Sans. I always called him Papyrus, I don't know why I switched to Papyrus, I think it was because everybody was cracked to me. I like Papyrus better though. Yeah, so you can get different bad ends, and they have different texts, but it doesn't seem to like add too much to the game, to be honest. It's cool that your decisions matter enough that you actually have to think about what you're doing though. They do give you hints of something before you go to the option. And this is where she tells you you can pick like a partner if you're investigating throughout the house, which is pretty important if you want to see what kind of ending you're going to get per through the character. You get it like a small introduction to all the characters, and then you get to choose which one you want to like actually bond with and get little cutscenes and kind of stuff like that if you're interested in that character. As I said, I picked Buddy and Hans because I was figuring... The whole thing is you're trying to find Hans's head, that's like the whole goal of the game, or the story. And I was like, oh, my old buddy should know because it's his head. And then there's little investigative scenes, this is the other kind of gameplay that's in the game so far. Well, I think the game's complete, but that's... Oh man, so one of these cutscenes is like, the investigative piece seems to be outside of the actual screen in the black part. And that got me for a little bit. But this game will, is going to get a six, uh, 6 out of 10 because even though it's a full like visual novel type game and it has multiple endings, the story just wasn't very gripping to me. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't amazing or anything either. It was, like, it was pretty okay. <laughs> and I feel like if you have a visual novel game, and this is kind of preference because visual novels it's kind of hard to rate because it's not gameplay, it's not graphics or anything like that. Graphics can help it, but it's not the main thing. The main thing is really the story. And while the story is okay, it's nothing that is going to make you want to play through it multiple times. But thanks for watching as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Bye!